Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. Today, we're going to edit our Business Central check layouts. The Fornaf check report was developed to print checks with a MICR font. Like all Fornaf reports, it is easy to use and easy to customize. You can edit your Fornaf check layout in the same way as you would edit any, any other Fornaf report, though the check has some special features. We will address these in this coffee break. To demonstrate how to edit our Business Central checks, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will discuss the check setup. In step three, I will edit the check layout. In the fourth and final step, I will discuss how to place the check in the exact bottom of the printout. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will edit checks in a Business Central on-premise tenant with the Business Central 2023 Wave 1 release. I've installed the universal code version of the 4NF customizable report pack and I have executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central SaaS environment. I also have the 4NF designer installed on my PC. The 4NF designer can be downloaded from the 4NF website. The first thing we will do is to set up the check and do a test print. The 4NF check setup gives us the basic tools to specify how the 4NF will print a check. So let's open Business Central and open the 4NF check setup. And in the 4NF check setup, uh, I need to set up some things to specify how the check will be printed. So the first thing I need to do is to how my MICR encoding is going to, going to be printed is that check routing number and bank account number or amount check routing number and bank account number or do I want to define it with a per tenant extension. Today I will just use check number, routing number and bank account number. Then I need to specify my check layout. So I can choose for instance a top check with one stop. This will automatically set the number of lines to 20. And if I use a check stop stop with two checks, you will notice that the number of lines in the stop automatically gets set to nine. You can set this number manually, but if you set it too high, then you will not be able to, split, to print two, in this case, stubs in uh, on, the, on the same page. Finally, you can specify how you want, where you want the check to print. Is that on the last page or the first page? And that only specifies for if you print um, a lot of lines per check. So if you have, uh, for instance, uh, 30 lines for a, uh, for a check, you'll get four pages of uh, reports. And in this case, the check will be printed on the last page. I can add a watermark or a PDF file that gets embedded to my, uh, to my check. I'll skip that for now. I'm happy with the blank. Uh, I can choose a signature file name and a sec second signature file name. We've done a video earlier on how to add a, uh, a second signature and specify when the first and the second signature is going to be printed based on the, on the check amount. So I'll skip that for now. I'll just add the first signature. Once, once I have everything set up, I will open my payment journal. In the payment journal, I've got a single line for a single check. I'm going to print that and that will bring up the four and a half check request page with some basic options. I've got the uh, bank account, the last check number. I've set reprint checks to true and I'm going to print. Please note you can't preview four and a half checks because that messes up the internal uh, logic of the four and a half checks, mainly the, uh, the voiding of the earlier printed check lines. You will notice that once I've done this, my check is printed. My setup in the bottom is uh, the, the maker setup that I've chosen earlier. I've got my signature and my two stops at the bottom. Now we know how to set up and run the check. It is time to have a look at the layout. So let's open Business Central and open the check in the Fornaf Designer. You will notice that the Fornaf check is not built on actual tables in Business Central. It uses an in-memory or temporary data set that Fornaf creates when you run the check. The data in the data set depends on the actual payment lines, but also on how you have set up your check. So to demonstrate that, we have, for instance, an arguments table, which contains all of the arguments on the, on the check request page. Then we have a void general journal line and the actual general journal line buffer. 
And then the, the actual check, the, uh, the, the actual sections are built on the check model, which is the 4.5 check model. And the 4.5 check model gets filled on the fly when you run and print the check. You will also notice that there's only one check stub body in the, in the check, even when we specify that two stubs must be printed. That means that every ch change I make on this specific stub section is used for both stubs on the printed checks. A simple change of height might have far reaching consequences as it affects so many lines. So let's have a play with that. Let's take this line and make my stub. Uh, Let's make this uh, this text box red and make this thing a little bit bigger or a lot bigger. I'm going to save and uh, save as a custom layout and activate. And that is once again, I can't do a preview on the on the check because I need to run this check from the uh, payment journal. So I need to open my payment journals and reprint my check. You will notice that uh, in my document number my uh, my background is now red. You will also notice because I've made it so high that my check actually runs over uh, multiple pages. So bear in mind that any change you make to the, to the stub will be made to all of these stub lines in both of the stub sections. And to demonstrate a little bit more see if I can undo this a little bit I can also make my stub footer a bit bigger uh, play with some more colors here let's make this one yellow and make this a bit bigger save it again and again print it from my payment journal There you go, my check stubs are now a decent height again, but you will notice that my check footers are now so high that they actually push the last bit of footer on, uh, on an extra or surplus page. And that's something that we don't want. So if you want to play with, these, uh, with the heights of the stub lines, that's perfectly possible, but you need to be very careful of, what, uh, of how, you make how high you make everything so you have space to print everything on a single page. Everything else in this 4NAV check layout works pretty much like everything else in all of the other 4NAV reports, uh, which means that you can use all of the tips and tricks, JavaScript, pictures, uh, barcodes, everything else inside the 4NAV check layouts. The only thing that is significantly different or that you don't really see on other reports is that we have these three MICR encoding lines at the bottom. Now a MICR encoding line is nothing magical about it. It's just a text box which prints text in a certain font, font being the, uh, the Micker font. And if I copy this content of this text box in a normal text box, let's save this and let's go and print our check. You will find that this Micker simply prints the account number uh, 9999888. We have the same same stuff here, and it prints that in between a bunch of characters, and those are the uh, the specific Micker transit char characters. And you can specify those yourselves. Uh, there's four of them, and they go from capital A to capital D, which means that we can easily build up our own Micker string. We don't need to depend on anything that somebody else has created for you. There we go, let's open this in a JavaScript editor. Let's say that I want to build my own maker string. I can simply say a plus find my model bank account. There we go. And I'm going to end up with the make a character for C. And that's it. That's all I need to do to really build my own maker, character, maker string. I can save this, print the check once again. You will find that I have created my own maker string, only it starts with a single A character and it ends with the C character right there. 
Finally, sometimes we want to place the check in the exact bottom of the page because that, that is where it is on the check stock. You can do this by creating a new footer for the check and placing that in the bottom of the page. I've prepared a layout for you which you can download from GitHub and that should get, help you get started. And just to go and have a look, I am going to import my layout, which is the check in bottom dot docx. You can download that from the link that I've given you. And when we have the check in bottom, if I open that layout in the Fournap designer, you will notice that there's a couple of changes because the stub is still right here, but I've moved the, uh, the check uh, section and I've moved that into a check footer. Now the only difficulty is that in the check footer, I cannot use the model data directly because the model had, has been iterated through and that's been gone and passed. So that's no, no longer accessible. So what I need to do is in the on after get record of the model, if I open that in JavaScript, you will notice that I move all of that stuff into a, a new JavaScript object. And this JavaScript object I can use in my, here we go. We use model that amount model with a lowercase m instead of a capital case m. Once you've done this, selected the layout, I can find my payment journals. And my payment journal print check once again. You will notice that the check is now placed right bang at the bottom of the page which means I can control exactly how high the maker string is from the bottom of the page. Let's recap what we just did. First, we have set up our check. We specified the layout and stub options and have added a signature. Then we have made some layout changes. We found that the changes we make on the stub sections are used in all the stubs that are printed on the page. We also found that we can build up our maker, str maker strings manually if we don't want to use the out-of-the-box ones. Finally, we found that we can place the check in the absolute bottom of the page. We just have to copy all of our check data in a JavaScript variable before we can use it in the footer. If you want to know more about Fornav, or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel, if you have any questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.